in seeking to solve the unanswered questions about the planet's motions, including the cause of their eccentricities, Kepler left the domain of visible space and explored the domain of audible space, the realm of music, which the Pythagoreans thought of as the underlying fabric of the universe. He first examines and does an exhaustive examination of the boundaries of visual space, of geometry, that is, plain geometry. He does the same thing with solid geometry, then extends that into the musical domain, extends that into the auditory domain, and examines all these characteristics of space he then takes you from the standpoint of an observer on the sun and actually constructs the entire solar system based upon those principles. He conceived of the sun as a composer, the generator of the harmonic relations among the planets, and thus sought for the harmonic proportions in the fastest and slowest angular velocities of each planet as seen from the Sun. For example, on the day Mars is closest to the Sun at perihelion, it would appear to traverse a 38-minute arc in the sky. On the day it is farthest from the Sun at aphelion, it would appear to traverse a 26-minute arc in the sky. The ratio between these is almost the ratio 2 to 3. When a vibrating string is divided into thirds, and two-thirds of it is plucked, it makes the harmonic interval of a fifth with the whole string. Kepler found each pair of planetary extreme motions corresponds to a different harmonic interval. And this is what Kepler finds at the very, towards the end of his life, that the reason for the eccentricities being the way that they are was so that an observer on the sun could actually discover that the entire solar system was arranged in such a way that both the major and minor mode in music, the, that is, the major and minor modes that we find in classical composition are expressed through the eccentricities of the orbits, through the motions of the planets at the extremes of their orbits, at their apsides, uh, at their perihelion and aphelion. While the eye perceived that the proportions of visible space were analogous to the distances of the planets from each other, the ear perceived that the relationships of audible space were analogous to the speeds of the planets. The mind then had to conceive of the juxtaposition of these two senses, of sight and hearing, to perceive the relations among the speeds and distances of all the planets together. This was Kepler's discovery, the culmination of his life's work. 
he discovered gravitation as the harmonic, unifying principle underlying the relations among all the bodies in the universe, just as a musical idea unifies multiple voices, singing seemingly radically differing lines in a complex polyphonic choral piece to a single effect. Although Kepler was willing to discard any of his assumptions, the one thing he held on to was that the Creator's universe is knowable to the mind of man. The student studying Kepler can't help but be inspired.